So we're just waiting for people to join. Um, so we'll start in a couple of minutes. So good evening to all of you as you're coming in. We'll just give it another couple of seconds. Okay, Monia, shall we start? So good evening and welcome to everybody here who's joined us this evening to this webinar about EMDR for the treatment of BDD. So my name is Beverly Hutton and I'm a psychodynamic and EMDR psychotherapist and I run the mental health charity Still the Hunger in Reading. This is my colleague Monia, um, so I just introduce you to Monia. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Monica Conforti. I'm a counseling psychologist and I work uh, within an um, integrative um, approach and I'm experienced in uh, CBT and EMDR therapy. Yeah. So Monia and I both run the Reading BDD support group, which we've been doing for a few years now. And we've been talking a lot about EMDR for quite a while. So it's really good to come along here this evening to tell you a little bit more about it. Uh, because more people are obviously hearing about it and wondering whether it will help them, whether it will work. So the plan for this evening is in a minute, Monia is going to summarise just very briefly for you how EMDR works in principle. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about EMDR for BDD specifically. We're going to show you um, a recorded interview um, with Katie and Tom. And then we're going to watch a recording of an actual EMDR session with Katie, who's been a complete star in agreeing to, to do this, to show you what EMDR is like. Then we will come back together, we'll discuss it in more detail afterwards, and we'll make sure that we've got enough time to answer any questions that you may have. So please you know, feel free to write any questions that you have in that Q&A, um, chat section as we go along and then we will try to answer what we can before the end. So Monia, over to you. What is what is EMDR? Yeah, to tell you about EMDR, I'd like briefly um, to take you a step back into its origins um, to explain how traumatization can occur and how EMDR can help it. Uh, so first of all, the origins of EMDR very briefly. Um, the mind can offer uh, heal itself naturally uh, in the same way as the body does. Uh, much of its natural coping mechanism occur, occurs during sleep, uh, so particularly during rapid eye movement, REM sleep. In 1987, um, Francis Shapiro discovered what has now become the eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, EMDR in short, uh, which reproduce uh, this natural self-healing process um, to start with, EMDR was applied and uh, researched more as treatment for uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, especially in veterans. But more recently, EMDR is used and found um, effective to treat a, wide, a much wider um, range of mental health um, problems. So now, what happens when you are traumatized and how EMDR can help? Our brain, um, as you may know, is continuously dealing with new information and uh, experiences in general, without a full awareness, um, packing them away in a long-term memory, um, ready to help us um, in the everyday life. Now, trauma develops when something out of the ordinary uh, happens, like a one-off overwhelming accident or being uh, repeatedly subject to distress, like childhood neglect or recurring bullying. And these events or repeated negative experience, as experiences overload and impede a natural coping mechanism that usually appropriately store away and digest those memory in the past. Um, now, the overloading uh, that can result in disturbing experiencing remaining frozen, stuck in your brain, and they remain in unprocessed. Such unprocessed memories and feelings are stored in a brain in the limbic system in a raw emotional uh, form, rather than in a verbal, more story mode. 
the limbic system maintains traumatic memories in isolated memory networks associated with emotions and physical sensations that comes from different senses and are disconnected from the brain's cortex uh, where we use language and to store memories or sometimes even they connect um, those sensations or physical uh, sensations to negative irrational explanation and especially for BDD those explanations can sound like uh, this happens because the way I look or because I'm ugly or because I have this specific flow and so forth. Um, what worse is that the limbic system's traumatic memories can be continually triggered in the present uh, when one experiences events or sensations similar to the difficult experienced in the past. Now, often the memory itself is long forgotten. So we, you may not remember it even but the painful feelings such anxiety, panic, anger, or despair are continually triggered and relieved in the present. Now with EMDR, uh, EMDR can help unstuck and promotes this very natural process of creating healthy connections between the different brain memory networks and a healthier explanation or story of what has happened in the past, allowing the person to move on and back to Beverly to explain a bit more. Okay, so what is an EMDR session actually like? So in a minute, we're going to see how we do EMDR online, but when we're working in the same room with somebody, we'll usually use, um, I use a light bar and pulsators. So I'm just gonna show you what that, that looks like. So I use this piece of kit. Uh, I can't switch it on because it doesn't work very well with the light here, but it will have a fast colored light that zooms backwards and forwards very quickly along there. And at the same time um, as watching the, the light moving, you may hold um, these pulsators. So like this in your hand, these vibrate um, and you have headphones on as well, which will bleep and everything is synced with the movement of the light. Now, some therapists, prefer to use their, their hand and they will wave like this in front of you. It's usually, it's very fast, okay? Um, and you follow the movement of either the light or their hand with your eyes. So as Monia said, EMDR utilizes that natural ability of your body. At the beginning of the session, so we will decide together whether we're going to focus on a disturbing memory or some aspect of the BDD itself. Although this is often just the starting point and it's what we refer to as the target. So some people will find that they start remembering various childhood memories, even going as far back as being in the pram as a baby, which is a, an amazing experience because we don't usually remember things going back as far as that. But others will stay much closer to the actual memory or the problem that we're working on but there's no wrong or right way. So often people are wondering, you know, particularly when they're trying this for the first time, am I doing it right? Your brain will make the necessary connections for itself and you can just trust yourself and the process to go where you need to go. So those eye movements, similar to those during REM sleep, will be recreated simply by asking you to watch the light bar moving backwards and forwards across your visual field. And the eye movements last for a short while and then stop. And you'll then be asked to report back on the experiences that you've had during each of those sets of eye movements. So experiences during a session may include changes in thoughts or images. You may get a picture. There may be physical sensations that you're experiencing in your body at the time. Uh, they may be emotional. They may be your feelings. And with repeated sets of eye movements, the memory or the distressing thoughts tend to change in such a way that it loses its painful intensity and simply becomes a neutral memory of an event in the past and the feelings fade. So other associated memories may also heal at the same time. So this linking of related memories can lead to a dramatic and rapid improvement in many aspects of your life. So EMDR is actually very similar to rescripting in many respects, but the added bilateral stimulation 
makes it easier for some people to work on something that's distressing. So whether that's the BDD itself or a traumatic event from the past, because the eye movements are making the brain work really hard and all that distraction makes it easier to get behind the BDD to wherever the roots lie in the past. Because those usual resistances that are operating to stop you from getting overwhelmed by your, by your emotions are bypassed, allowing the brain to process the material very quickly and easily and safely. So the BDD itself similarly is a powerful defensive pattern of thinking that distracts you from thinking about other things. And the way EMDR works is it manages to bypass the BDD to reach the issues that have caused it or contributed to it. So we know that BDD is very distressing. It's an obsessive pattern of thinking which can make it very difficult to get beyond it. But EMDR actually enables us to do this um, and in a safe way. So when these other problems have been resolved, it then makes it easier to target the BDD or some people find that the BDD issues have actually just naturally resolved themselves. So I think at this point, let's have a look at what Katie um, and Tom have to say about their experience. So if you just bear with me, I'm going to um, share my screen with you and show you this, this interview. Hi, Katie, um, Tom. Um, <laughs> uh, you started with EMDR for BDD and anorexia back in March this year, 2020. What's it been like? Yeah, it's been a bit of a journey um, to start with. We hadn't heard of it before. So I, um, being in sort of state of crisis, I was a bit dubious of it. But uh, it's it's very much changed our lives and changed the way we both think um, and how I live my life completely. So, yeah. Okay. Can you say anything about the process at all? Um, I'd say the process you have to believe in. Um, you have to, it's a journey. You have to um, just commit and know that it's going to work out because the process is intense. Um, if you if you gave up halfway through, you're probably putting yourself in the worst position than you started with. But then if you carry on, no, but because you're so raw and vulnerable, yeah. um, and then if you carry on, you then realize how it's changed you and how it's made you better. Um, yeah. I think that's the case though for any psychotherapy. Yeah. Isn't it? it feels quite raw in the process. And I think the difference with the MDR is that it's quite quick and full on. Yeah. Um, so you get to yeah. your end goal a lot quicker yeah. don't you yeah it's very very quick I think at times it's daunting how quick because it's so amazing how it works um one week you could really really hate your body and you know and then the next week that heart's fixed and it's happened within a space of a week just because you've worked on one element which is quite amazing because you've lived your whole life with this and in a few weeks it can be helped so so how long have you struggled with these with issues with BDD and and um, and anorexia? Um, pretty much my whole life, I'd say, from a very, very young age, from about the age of seven, like nine, I'd say, um, which EMDR then goes into and you see what age it started. Um, so I'd say for pretty much my whole life and pretty consistent, it's not ever sort of eased off. Um, but obviously since doing MDR, it's, it's gone pretty much. It's, it's, it's been held. And had you tried other things before? Yeah, I um, obviously the usual sort of routes that you get put down. So CBD and um, talking therapies, um, medication. I'd had that several times, a few routes of CBD. Um, but they never really sort of helped me. They never got to the core of what caused it um so yeah never really felt like there was a shift ever with it so what was the difference what was the the main difference with this compared to those other things um i think the main difference would be um it really cuts it off at the root um and when i first when we first found emdr it said oh you know 
you don't necessarily when I first met you it's you said oh we're not really going to work on the BDD and the Orexia and I was thinking but that's what I need um and so wrong I was <laughs> um we barely spoke about it but most people suffering I know most people suffering BDD and anorexia it comes from something and when you start working on that then that is it's cut off at the root and that is obviously what the difference was we didn't actually work on that we worked on the root and have there been any sort of like standout moments along this this journey for you um yeah I'd say so there's several standout moments um I think I think throughout the journey, I realised obviously the roots and people who had affected my life and there were standout moments where I realised I need to sort of take back ownership of myself and my life and sort of have the strength and obviously go into this thinking nothing's ever going to change, I'm never going to stand up to these people, stand up to myself and sort of a switch goes in your head and you're like, I can do it. Yeah. Um, and there's a few times I was just sort of made to do it myself. In other, you know, in anorexia and BDD, you rely heavily on other people. And actually, MDR, you can't rely on anybody but yourself in your own mind. So, um, yeah, it's really, it's it's intense when you're doing it, but it changes your life. That I will, I will say that forever, it changes your life. Amazing. So it was, I think, less than six months of weekly therapy of yeah. which we've reduced it down to once yeah. a month just checking in there's other things that's been going on around you and you settle down yeah. so I mean it's amazingly quick isn't it really yeah it's less than a year yeah. at this point yeah never thought that would happen to be honest it was it was always sort of a dream never thought it'd become a reality and Tom what have you noticed yeah it's, like, it's quite yeah it's quite it's quite phenomenal really I mean especially when you think about like the one what you whether you're saying, you know, with the time scales, from everything from, you know, from, from before and then from the start and, the, and the, the whole journey of it all, really. I think it was perfect for you as well, really, the actual yeah. therapy as well. But it's, yeah, I think, the same as Katie, when initially going, you know, mind starts to want to go, no, you know, coping mechanisms and CBD and all the rest of it again, and thinking, oh, you know, are we, are we quite got here. But just very quickly and obviously very evidently as well, it, proved it's and does prove it's worth and yeah it's just I mean if you know to sort of see everything now and sort of see where yeah. <laughs> you know sort of pay is now and has been for, for a bit really um and for yeah for to be assured of somebody who's you know for living together for so long with everything that comes along with both the, the BDD and the anorexia and for that you know even for me to get used to going actually this really you know this hasn't it really isn't here and hasn't been you know for, for a while it's almost it's almost quite a shock for for me in a way really mm. to sort of see that it is because it's there's not this you know there's not any doubt now there's no sort of no evidence of of anything of any lingering yeah anything yeah. and it's and it's yeah and it's and the whole once you like I say once you're sort of in and you're with the the you know the concept and you like anything I suppose but especially this you're with it and you, you do it and it's just well it's hard to really describe really, especially just, you know. Yeah. I think, I think yeah, when, when you're doing EMDR, you're so in it and you so believe it and you know what's happened and the change, you feel the change. I think actually the, the people that it is just as hard on the people you live with and the people around you because they've also lived with the anorexia, the BDD for so long, like Tom. And then it's almost like he has to, it's happened so quick. So it took a little while to believe that that was actually me now. And, and that, you know, we hadn't done anything that worked this quick or this strongly before. So it was a bit like, what? Is this, is this how? What? <laughs> so, yeah, it's, 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 it's really, amazing. Really, yeah, really, really good. Thinking back to when we started, I think um, we did we did an intensive week at the beginning, didn't we? Yeah. You travelled you traveled down. So, yeah. And I think actually what's probably quite helpful and people might, uh, want to know is that actually our, we then very quickly went into the lockdown didn't we after yeah. it started so all the work then has been online yeah and a lot of people think well does the EMDR work on online so we did meet and do it in person and yeah. then, we, then for the majority we switched to online what's the difference being with, with that um 
For me, nothing. I felt it just as strongly online because it's not about you being in the room with me. It's about me being in my own head and you just facilitating that. Um, you know, by asking the questions that you need to ask. And I think once you, I said to you before, I always visualised the bar, the movement of the um, blue light and like the buzzing in the hands, but you don't need that. You, you know, you have to tune into your own head. I think the only thing for me meeting you originally, it then gave me that trust to know, you, like I've met you in person and then I knew you online, but I don't think it would have taken that long to get that um, relationship overline online anyway so yeah I don't really I think it's just as effective to be honest yeah we just had to change the way we did it so when we yeah. met the person we used the light bar and we had yeah. the meters yeah. and then switching to online we've done yeah. butterfly tapping okay. and then you had your eyes closed which has been different but yeah it works equally well that's the same um and actually the like you say the, the really intense, the, the stuff that we've actually done that's really changed in my life. We've, we've done it all online. All of, all of that was online, the stuff, the really, the latter stuff. So yeah, I don't think it matters really what way. So is there anything that you would want to say to anybody else thinking about EMDR or who's maybe hearing about it for the first time? What would you say to them? Yeah. I think definitely. I think um, I'm a believer in it now, but I think I was very, very sceptical to begin with. Um, Tom had convinced me to do the application, to do the assessment for months. You were sort of trying to look up stuff, get me to do stuff. And I was, because I wasn't in the right frame of mind, I wasn't wanting to do it. Um, but, you know, if, if you really do want to sort of get better and have a better quality of life living without BDD or anorexia, I definitely suggest it. It has, I'm not, I'm not being dramatic when I say it's changed my life. Like, it, it, I'm on a different path now completely. Um, I feel like a different person, really. I feel like the person I should have been for the last 26 years, you know, seven years. So it's, I will advocate it to the day I die, pretty much, for every person. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So now you've heard from Katie and Tom talking back over the experience over the last year and, and in a minute I'm going to show you an actual session that Katie and I recorded at the beginning of the year. So in this session you'll be able to see how we're working online using that butterfly tapping only as the bilateral stimulation. So I thought, you know, we could just try this, you can see what it's like, you, you know, you quickly notice that as you tap um, literally like this quite firmly on your on your shoulders this it, it's quite fast actually but if you just do this along with me but then if you shut your eyes now we're not going to process anything we're not thinking about the bdd at all just the experience of the tapping but if you shut your eyes for a minute and focus on that tapping you'll probably notice that your your eyes behind your eyelids are following that tapping sensation so actually, this is probably more like what happens in the REM sleep than when we use the light bar or, or do it like this with our hands, with our eyes open. So it's just as effective. Now, in the session that we're going to show you, um, Katie, as you've heard, she's already made a great recovery. It's a year since she started and our sessions have reduced to once a month for the last six months. And in this session, Katie's focusing on the impact that her anorexia in the BDD had upon her relationship with, with Tom. And as she was talking about, you know, there's a lot to get used to um, when you recover. Um, so I thought this might be a, a really useful session for us to have, have a look at, to think about recovery and getting used to that. So we're gonna watch this session. So I'll share the screen again. It's 25 minutes long. So we'll watch that and then we'll come back together and we'll make sure there's enough time for, for questions. So bear with me and I'll just share the screen again. Okay. So, hi Katie. What's the... Um, the memory that we're going to be working on today? Um, I think, obviously, 
the fear of Tom going. So we'll start at the point where he sort of turned around when I was poorly and said that he didn't really, couldn't go on with it and couldn't feel the spark anymore with it. Okay. And when you, when you bring up that, what picture represents the sort of worst part of that incident? Um, he sat on like our office chair in the in the office, and I've gone in and I was um, obviously I was doing EMDR at the time, and I was trying to express it, and he he was blank. It was like this blank expression. Okay, so it's the look. It's what he looked like the yeah. look on his face. He was just sat there, sort of energyless. And when you bring up that picture, what's the negative belief that you have about yourself now? Um, that, uh, the negative belief that um, he doesn't love me. Okay. I'm not loved. Which is the stronger one? He doesn't love. I'm not him. loved. Yeah. Not loved. I'm not loved. Okay. Okay. And when you think of that, that picture, um, what sort of emotions does it bring up? <laughs> you can say I'm crying. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, just genuine like Incident. upset, like genuine yeah. grief. Okay. And on a scale of 0 to 10, where 10 is maximum disturbance and 10, um, 0 is none, how disturbing does it feel to you now? Um, I guess at the moment it feels quite strong, so probably unmanageable, like a 7, because it's manageable because of previous work. Okay. And where are you feeling that in your body right now? Just, it's all heavy. It's very sort of okay. here. <laughs> I can't explain. Okay. So you know what we're you know what we're doing. You know how to do it. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do the fast butterfly tapping, sort of like this sort of speed. But before you start tapping, if you just just pause, just bring the incident to mind. Bring that picture to mind and that negative cognition that I'm not loved. And then once you've connected with that, um, then you start tapping and just go with it. And what comes to mind? There's the feeling of feeling very out of control. Okay. Um, notice it. In that moment, I was feeling that. Okay, just notice that. Go with that. And what do you notice now? Um, just feeling in here is very strong. All right, notice that, go with it. And what do you notice now? Um, just in that moment, I felt very unloved by everybody, not just Tom, but by myself as well. I wasn't loving myself, I didn't, didn't feel the love from anything at that time. All right, go with that. Just notice it, go with it. What comes to mind? Um, the look, the look on his face and the coldness, um, I, f I feel, I feel a genuine fear for that. Um, go with that. No, just, that. Go with it. And 
not coming to mind. Um, I guess I've, the, the fear has carried on, even though the love has returned um, for me. And that feeling of, of things not going the way I want um, for that out of my control again. Okay, all right, just go with it, noticing it, go with it. Okay, and what's coming to mind? Um, I need to carry on, sorry. Okay. I guess. I'm linking his recent sort of, if he wasn't in the moment or present, um, I link it to that. And that's such a big thing to put on an emotion. <laughs> okay, all right, just go with that. And what comes to mind now? I think it's this, just then I sort of saw that my whole life I've had a fear of um, of not being loved or someone being unhappy with me and someone not, not wanting to be around. So notice that feeling and I want you just to, with your eyes shut, just to drop back. Drop back to when you notice you felt that before, particularly a particular incident. Okay. You're doing really well. Where's the first place that you land? Um, obviously, we've worked on this before. Um, and I have made amends with it, which is obviously the <laughs> the root of my anorexia anyway. Um, but I guess even though we doubt, it's obviously my dad going um, and that feeling of someone not wanting to be there. Um mm -hmm. Even though I feel like I put that to bed in my head, I guess the fear of someone else doing it is still there, even though that's gone, the fear is still there. Okay, so hold well on, just go with that. Okay, I think, I, I I guess if I was to be honest, I've had the fear deep down all along that Tom was going to leave me, mm. our entire relationship, because of that. Yes. Um, but like I've said before, it it was always a bit of an irrational fear, and he when he did, it made it a reality, which I don't want to... I feel like I'm going to be scared it's going to happen again. I'm not going to see it happening again. Just go with it. Just go with it. It's really interesting doing this now after dealing with this all in a in a kind of crisis place um, during my recovery. Um, whereas now I've got stuff coming up saying, well, it's because you're not enough. <laughs> and then I've got my other side now going, well, you are. <laughs> so it's really interesting. But yeah, I guess there's an element of that that I'm not enough for him at this current time. All right, so now to sit and go with that. What's coming to mind? It's quite refreshing in a way because before I would have said, I'm, I'm not loved, I'm not, I don't, you know, I'm not enough, I'm not that. And because I've now found that sense of self love, I am enough and I am loved by myself. It's just sort of convincing others <laughs> in my head, convincing someone else to love me properly. Notice that, notice that, go with that. And what's coming to mind? Um, I guess it's the feeling that I'm no longer the cause of Tom's pain and upset. Go with that, it's really important. Mm -hmm. 
That even if he's distant with me and has that cold look, people have their own stuff going on, and he certainly does. And it's not, I have to remember that it's, I'm better now, it's not me causing that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just there to help rather than the person making it happen. Okay. Go with that. <sighs> Oh, what's coming to mind? I guess it's just the feeling of um, like a realization. I guess I put so much emphasis on it working mm -hmm. that, and so much emphasis on it breaking down that actually, the more you think about something, the more you'll probably make it happen <laughs> because you're putting so much emphasis on that happening that. You might start to push that person away and like involuntary, which I don't want to do. Okay, go with that thought. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of when Tom's like, I love you, and oh, I want to be with you forever, and it's for that. Um, I believe it, but I don't fully trust it. <laughs> okay, but let's really focus it. on it. Let's focus mm -hmm. on him saying that and hear it. Go with that. Let's see if we can strengthen it. It's because he said that before he left. Yeah. He's always said that strong stuff of, I love you, I'm going to be with you forever. And then obviously he left, but there was obviously a bigger thing in the relationship than the relationship at that time. And yeah. um, so that's not there now. Okay. All right, just go with it. Just keep going. I guess he wouldn't have come back if he didn't want to and if he he knows he has left before he so he could again so he would have done you know it's it wasn't me that broke it down it was the anorexia and that's gone so I have to remember that it's me he wants not the anorexia and that's gone so he's got a chance to be with just me now so with that it's you he wants To mind. The feeling of, I guess, um, I saw me before, I felt like very unlovable mm. and not worth it. And now I know I've got that in myself that I can allow it to be given by someone else properly now rather than just always question it and always think there's an ulterior motive or something. Okay. I can allow it now. Good, go with that. Let's go with it. Okay, what's coming to mind? The feeling of um, that I can I can be a help now, not a hindrance, and part of love is sort of being there for the other person, which I very much wasn't for a long time. Good, go with that. Go with that. So you can be a help, not a hindrance. And what comes to mind? Just the feeling that I guess I don't need to be fearful of this. It, it's, you know how actually he could be thinking the same now she might go if you know and um that we wouldn't be here if not if I was wanted to be here um it's I need to accept it <laughs> and not constantly be worried about it okay go with that just go with that
And what comes to mind? Randomly. Yeah. <laughs> I went like the other way, like I saw like myself. <laughs> like even if he did leave, obviously that's not what I want and he's loved my life, but I've overcome so much more, like I'd be okay. And I guess I see myself be left as like this crumbling mess that I was before, but obviously I would be, I'd be heartbroken, but I think it's the fear of feeling weak again, the fear of feeling rock bottom again. And mm. I wouldn't be because I'm overcome so much bloody more than that. Um, I overcome that at the same time as anorexia and a worldwide pandemic. <laughs> so, right. you know, I'm strong and, I guess it is linked to the fear of sort of being rock bottom again, which I don't think I would ever hear again. That, go with that thought. Um, yeah, I'm thinking about I am strong. You are strong. And what comes to mind? Just a feeling of str- feeling strong. Okay. I am. Um, I guess, I guess with the fear of Tom going or being unhappy with me, it's also the fear of that validation that, oh, I'm doing all right, I'm okay, like, oh, you love me, oh, I'm I'm worth it. And it's that looking for the external validation that I was all along. And I don't need to do that. I need to just be content with what my life is now um, that I've, I've made this year. I've made that happen and I don't need someone else to make me feel happy that's just an addition, I guess. Okay. So go back to the, I want you to go back to the target. Just have another look at that. Um, just maybe check your eyes for a minute. Have a look at the target and what comes to mind as you look at it? I see someone who is struggling as well. Okay. Through it. And how does that make you feel? It makes you feel sad. All right, let's just go with that. Let's connect with that sadness. And what comes to mind? I guess that's what I've been trying to do of this like urge to make it up or this urge to sort of it never upset again or never make a person feel that way again. Mm. Which I just can't live my life, but I realise that. Mm. I realise that I can't. Okay, just go with that. Okay, what comes to mind? I guess I should have no fear of this anymore, really. Because... I guess the fear isn't of Tom Lehman. The fear that I originally had was of me and my mental health and, you know, the fear of the past. I guess I have to keep reminding myself that that's not there anymore. You're, that you're okay problem. now. You... That's, let's focus on that. Let's go with it. Up on that. And what comes to mind? Just the feeling of feeling okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go Living with life without it. Yeah, go with that. It's okay. And what comes to mind? So my my actions don't need to be for anybody else. You know, I I do what I do and you know that the people around me that's what they want they want to be with me it's not me because I'm being a certain way or me because I'm trying hard to make sure they're okay it's me self-love being okay and that's why they're there it's go with that and what does that say about you I guess with this fear, it's all about other people. It's not about, you know, 
me it's about oh thinking about that person still which is what I've done my whole life and this is if there's one thing that I've learned this year is I am allowed to put myself first and actually in that case no you keep working on you and that person will love you don't worry about whether they're gonna be put off you or whether they're gonna change their mind because that's their that that's out of my control that's me trying to control it like I'm with everything I'm trying to control the situation if I um, if I eat this I can control my body because you know it's uh, I see what you've done there <laughs> go on go with it well done go with that. okay what's coming to mind just the want, <laughs> just the, I guess it's just this feeling of, I just want to live a normal life now. I just want normality, just completely normal relationship, normal love, normal feelings about yourself. And but I'm the only one that can really do that. Go with that. Just go with that. What comes to mind? I have to believe Tom when he says he loves me. <laughs> that belief needs to be there because that's a past feeling that's creeping in. And if I let other past feelings creep in, then we'd be back at square one. So why what am I allowing that one? I shouldn't be. What do you need to do to help you believe it? I need to mm. remember Tom loves me. <laughs> What's your favourite? And what comes to mind? Just more of the same of um, trying to, you know, in the moments I need to sort of have that motto of, no, you're loved, you're fine. You're okay, you're loved. <laughs> I guess. Okay, let's just strengthen it. Let's just work on that. And what comes to mind? I feel quite at ease with that. I feel quite um, like with all the other little things that I, that you know, I like a phrase <laughs> that I can sort of say in those times. And I feel like if I said that to myself, I'd go, yeah, actually, you go, girl, <laughs> you're fine. Okay, so shut your eyes again, have a look back at the target. And what do you notice now as you look at it? It feels very foreign, like it, it's a different, like it's not even us. And if you were to measure it now on the scale of 0 to 10, how distressing does it feel? Um, to me, very low. Yeah. Maybe like a two, but only because I feel sad for them. <laughs> if that makes does that feel Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel sad for them for what was going on at that time. Okay. But for you? Yeah, I feel all right with it. You feel okay. All yeah. right. So looking at that original the original instant, the memory, what would be a more positive cognition now? What suits it? What suits it better than um, you know, Obviously, I want to say I'm loved, but at that time, I wasn't, but I can change it to Tom needed support. Tom needed help then. You know, it wasn't that I wasn't loved, because I was. Okay. I so can sort of myself out of that. Thinking about a positive statement for you, though, so you know that Tom's yeah. okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. All right. Yeah. So that fits. All right. So think about the original memory that we started with and those words, I'm okay. Let's hold those together and tap on that. I 
And how strong does that feel on one to seven with seven being completely true? Um, yeah, very true. All right, just, just, just do a bit more. So holding that memory together with the words, I'm okay. And how's that feel? Yeah, good. Really good. Yeah. Okay. So let's just do a, a quick body scan. So just closing your eyes and concentrate on the memory and the positive cognition that I'm okay. Just mentally scan your body top to bottom and just notice whether you feel anything. Mm. Feels fine? Yeah, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so welcome back. So first of all, I just want to give a massive thank you to Katie for being so brave and, and willing to share that with us because that takes enormous courage. But I think she believed in the process that um, she was very willing to, to share that and, and be an encouragement to you. Um, so let's just have a, have a think about um, what, what else can EMDR um, be used for? Um, so some people think that EMDR is only used for PTSD and unfortunately in a lot of areas in the UK there's only NHS funding um, for EMDR for PTSD at the moment but actually EMDR has been successfully used to treat lots of other issues as well including um, chronic pain conditions and the body image issues and eating disorders, uh, panic attacks, anxiety and depression um, stress and phobias, uh, sleep problems as well, um, and grief, addictions, self-esteem, performance, anxiety, as well as dissociative disorders and DID as well. So Monia, people will probably be asking whether anyone, everyone would benefit from EMDR. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, there was in fact some some of the question. I've, we will address some of them, but not maybe fully all of them, but we'll start with this one. Um, yeah, it's kind of, can EMDR benefit everyone? Um, uh, EMDR can accelerate um, therapy um, by resolving the impact of your post-trauma and allow you to live more fully in the present. But it's not, however, appropriate for everyone. Um, the process is rapid and any disturbing experiences, if they occur, may last just comparatively a short period. Like you saw, uh, Katie was kind of distressed in the moment, but then she overcame it. Nevertheless, you need to be aware of and willing to experience the strong feelings uh, and disturbing thoughts, um, which sometimes occurs during the sessions or even a couple of days after the session. So if you've got a good network and, and support is much better because therapy is not, as somebody was pointing, it's quite uh, daunting and distressing at times. Um, and it's, yeah, so it is unfortunately not suitable for everyone and it might not be fully for you, uh, but to reassure um, the assessment and the initial sessions um, of therapy with your therapist um, will fully show and determine if EMDR is um, is for you or not. So this is kind of uh, the process was in the full of so actually towards the end. But at the beginning, there is a much more kind of there are phases where you can get to know each other. You need to get to understand the targets and what what you want to work about, um, and then prepare for it. There is a much more extended preparation towards the work. This is kind of the cherry on the cake, really. Um, yeah, this was, uh, and somebody was asking also about um, if you have to have the memories, the preparation will sieve out if there are current distresses that maybe point and help, help you to remember past experiences because at times they are not remembered. And there were also questions about how long uh, the treatment um, takes. Uh, I've jotted down some answers for you. So EMDR can be a brief um, focused treatment um, a standalone treatment and 
but it can also be part of a long therapy program. So you can even pause a program that you're already in, do some EMDR, focus with an EMDR therapist, and then return to, your, um, to resume your therapist um, in another modality. Um, so there is no wasted therapy if you've done ages of it. Uh, EMDR could help speed it up. Um, the EMDR session lasts 16 to 90 minutes. Um, or how long it, one can cope. Somebody was asking in the chat if in the spectrum or fatigue can impact, we can shorten and is a dialogue and as, is an agreement between you and the therapist, how long you can uh, stand the session for. Um, at times there are in need of more session during the, the same week, um, especially at the beginning of therapy, like Katie has said. Um, and unlike other therapies and modalities, there is dramatic improvement and things can be achieved very quickly um, with this more intensive approach. Um, somebody was asking the cost, it depends on the therapy, but it seems to be expensive. Still, if you consider it'll speed up the process. So it may be um, intensive and costly at the beginning or the, during the, the uh, there, but in the kind of overall, it can become very, um, I mean, understandably affordable. Um, and there was somebody asking the age of Katie, um, we don't give it for confidentiality, she was young, but we have found out it's important to notice that um, young people um, can often resolve the problem quite much quicker. I mean, there's less burden, less experience with BDD as well, which is traumatic in itself. Um, and so somebody, sometimes younger people can um, maybe overcome the, and have a quicker process than someone that, that has struggled with it uh, for many years. But in January, it is quite quick anyway. Um, I don't know if somebody is uh, worried about one aspect that we uh, kind of sometimes are asked about, if you are, if you remain in control or how will I lose conscience about it or not? You've seen, but during EMDR, will you always remain in control, fully alert, wide awake, we want that. Um, and it's not an hypnosis and you can stop even the process if it's too distressing. So it's in you in charge, like we said, it's, it follows the self-healing um, and it facilitates that process that is inside. Um, there was somebody asking if short or longer tapping, it depends on the dynamic between the therapist, usually it's maybe sometimes a bit longer than what Beverly has used, it's not a perfect kind of, and it's not, it's personal, it really changes. So it may not, your session won't, maybe look like this um, and is a attunement that the clients and the therapists can uh, can have. Um, yeah, and as you, as you see, if things are coming spontaneously um, and so people can feel EMDR is really a natural and very empowering, is you leading the process, it's very collaborative, but mainly in, in you, you want to say things. Um, I can see there are plenty of questions coming up. I don't know if you've yeah. seen some of them. I've went through some. You've made, you've seen some on there. Uh, yeah, I've been looking so far, but there are more added. Um, uh, I think there was somebody saying about not having memories. I think we've addressed a bit that. I don't know if you want to add anything on that end, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't, uh, quite often that's the case and people will come in and they, and they don't have memories. Um, and, and it's fine. You can work on, well, what's the problem that you're, that you're struggling with today? What's the biggest issue? What would you like to deal with today? Uh, and then you can focus on that. And it may be, you know, that you, as you start to process, memories will come. Uh, or it may be that you, you are experiencing and processing it all in the moment, you know, in, in your body. I had, um, and this, is, this was not a, a BDD client, but I had a, a client who had um, had an experience of um, a near-death experience as a, as a baby um, and their, their head had fallen forward and, and they, you know, they, nearly, they nearly died. And, and in, the, uh, in their processing, what they were experiencing um, was um, saying to me that my chairs in the therapy room were very uncomfortable. I should have um, supports for people's necks behind them because he needed to keep his he felt he needed support on his neck and so in the session he's complaining about all the neck pain um, but actually what he's processing is that experience as a baby now he can't remember it um, but he's his it's held in his body you know the body holds the score 
um, which is a well-known book by Bessel van der Kolk, but, and, and he's processing that experience. So he didn't have to remember it, but it's, it's there, it's in the body, it's in the central nervous system. And I was thinking about also that you will do work for resourcing yourself. If BDD is a, is a, is a strategy that your body is using, your mind is using, sometimes helping having strategies to cope with current emotions will start freeing some of the memories because the absence of memories usually is a, is a sign of trauma and the trauma, the mind, the mind try to overcome it with blanking it out. Um, so that's in the process it might come back. Um, there are questions about how to be referred, how to approach a therapist, people saying, how do you go about that? I don't know if you want to give a bit of a... Um, if you, um, if you, I think it's very difficult actually to, to get uh, an NHS referral for it. So, um, I mean, you may be lucky and you can ask, but um, I think have a look on the, there's a, um, an EMDR register. So if you just Google EMDR register, you will find um, practitioners that are, are in your area. So I'd yeah, and it's important that I know with our support group that you find the therapies that suit you. And sometimes they're not, they are not maybe aware of BDD in specific, but you can bring your own understanding and be very brave there to tell about it. Because often people go into therapy not telling the, the BDD because it's such a shame related kind of topic it's so hard to bring it but if you know and you are here today and you understand that BDD is kind of key to you be very brave and put it out there to the therapist so that they can look up and and get in touch or or be un understanding that that's also what you're struggling with and the MDR can target the memories that will be fueling BDD or in and BDD symptoms of BDD and EMDR is very flexible and can go into current issues but go back as well um yeah, we're seeing questions coming up down here yeah about uh, about online where it's working online effectively so there are people asking about a bit roughly the price i mean how long is a piece of string um roughly i mean depends where you're based as well because they are kind of they used to be in london area maybe there were prizes but i don't know i think it it may be um, and someone just said, is it only for private patients? I mean, in some areas, EMDR is, is available on the NHS and it's worth asking. Um, and particularly with what we're trying to do is raise awareness here, here today of the effectiveness of this for, for BDD. Um, but it's a, it can be a very quick, um, a very quick process. So it might be worth paying for a few sessions. I mean, it, for some people who may have been struggling for such a long time, they may only need a couple of sessions. Um, uh, it might be worth just in, investing in that upfront initially uh, compared to, you know, struggling for, for years, it might be it might be really helpful. And it really depends on how much the traumatic experience is because uh, hiding and doing the rituals or if BDD is linked with OCD or other kind of uh, issues is more complex. It's not really, um, and not the, it, age can be a kind of a, an element, but it can be also how much and how intense is your kind of uh, life with BDD um, because it, that is very traumatic in itself. But, and I know there are people um, saying that um, yeah, they worked with EMDR and maybe hasn't worked fully in the BDD. And sometimes it's combining more kind of tools. And that's why integrative sometimes and kind of uh, seeing what best work for you. Uh, because sometimes it's a matter of being compassionate towards BDD that may be staying at the back and people experienced this BDD toll being there, but not much, not impacting as much in the life. So keep going with looking for what's best for you. Yeah, I saw someone's just saying, um... Uh, whether they were too old at 47 honestly you can do oh, no. any <laughs> any age at, at all um it's just when you're when you're younger it can be much much quicker but it does vary for for everyone yeah. um, and thank you if i'm picking up all the um any other questions 
that we should cover. And um, I've got some about uh, DID and dissociation things. I mean, there are EMDR um, therapists. Um, if you've got specific added on to BDD with DID or or in the spectrum or whatever is the kind of because something sometimes it comes with friends, um, but. Uh, there are kind of treatment specific or therapists specialized in DID. We do work sometimes. We do have this as well, or in this with people in the spectrum or what else. But look and kind of ask the therapist if you've got is already some diagnosis alongside because that is always important to realize if there are the skills there. Um, and BDD trained, I don't to be BDD trained. I don't think <laughs> I don't think so, particularly with this. Um, with this, with the MDR, you just need them to be experienced with the MDR. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you'll work out the target. Um, I don't think that is. Yeah. I don't know if you are aware of BD the training would be good. But we are kind of ex in upon our experience, we are kind of sharing this, and mm -hmm. and I think it's working really similarly to. Of course, if if the therapist knows a bit better what it is like. And they can be not making that kind of silly mistakes that therapists can do. <laughs> but. Uh, and I, um, anybody's welcome to join us in the, the Reading um, BDD support group. So if we haven't managed to answer your questions uh, mm. today, if we haven't covered everything, or you, um, you still you have questions after it, the Reading um, BDD support group meets on the second Saturday of every month at 3.30 to 5 um, and you're welcome to come along and ask more questions to us personally there it's it's online so it's on it's yeah zoom the same as this but we'll be able to answer lots of questions and talk about it more and um, so do feel free to come along and, and join that the, the links in the usual place with the support groups and have a look at our website as well so if you, I saw, um, I think Nicole's just posted that. So um, you have a look at our website, which is stillthehunger.co.uk. Um, and there's some other, there's um, te a testimony page where you can read about other other stories and have a look a bit more about what we're what we're doing here in Reading. If you're interested, I'll try to share the the picture if you want to with the details if people oh. want. We're just going to put our contact details up for you for for a couple of minutes, and um, and then we'll we'll finish here. So there's our um, you've got my email address there, um, which is the the same email address for um, for the BDD group, and there's our website. So I I hope that's been really helpful, and. Um, maybe look forward to seeing some of you in in March so 13th of March so thank you for joining thanks Nicole lots of thank yous coming in <laughs> yeah yeah thank you as well Good, I'm glad it's helpful.